Hey guys, and welcome to this painting video where I'm going to take you through how I do my sort of quick and easy bases. Um, I've got lots of people asking, and bases are nothing to be afraid of. There's lots of products out there that you can just apply straight on, um, but I have a, a few different ways of doing it. Um, and the core to all of my bases is Vallejo Earth Texture Acrylic. Um, you get 200ml for about a tenner, um, and it's like dia diorama effect stuff. And this stuff's brilliant. You can pick it up on eBay, online, and obviously a friend of local gaming stores as well. Um, I prefer this for my Necrons because I like the idea of like a dead world, all the life has been sucked out of it. There's lots of different ones, AK Interactive, do some beautiful basing stuff, uh, so it's well worth looking at. It's like a paste, okay, so it's like a, a, a gunk, so to speak, and the way I apply it is with a little spatula, and I pick up 100 of these for like £2 on, on eBay, and it's like a, it's like a paste. Okay, so I have here my base, which is a monolith base, and literally just apply it on. Okay, and you can undulate it for texture as much as you want. You literally can, and it's just a case of putting it on. This base is obviously enormous, it's 160mm. Um, for smaller miniatures, you know, it, the principle is exactly the same just on a smaller scale. And I like it because it's got a fine sort of grit grind to it, which when we come to the next stage, really sort of picks out. Um, the bit in the middle is, is where the sort of hover stand's gonna be, okay? So I'm not too 100% worried about covering that. In fact, I don't want to because I want to use plastic glue to adhere to the actual base itself, so it's like a, a firm set. And we just keep going. Obviously, this is an enormous base. Um, it's the same thing for sort of like knights and things like that, you know. But you get loads and loads of clear coverage in this acrylic stuff. It's, you really do. Um, you know, just keep <laughs> daub it on, basically. <laughs> um, I get a coverage first as best we can. You can use this as well, guys, if you wanted to roll it sort of. Say, for example, if you wanted to do flat sort of pavement you just go straight you see what I mean so you'd like a road surface uh, whereas I want a bit of undulation in it um, I want it to look quite fine but I want it to look as if well like a lot of visual robots have sucked the life out of the place so basically that's the uh, that's the idea I'm going for so okay we get in there a bit more on the other side and you can texture up to your heart's content really so to texture it and then sort of go along. Give it a bit of texture with the stick, you know, just all over it. Build up a bit of bit of variation, a bit of undulation. You know, you can apply this with a brush, but if I'm honest with you, it, it destroys br brushes die in this stuff. Okay. Okay. So it's like making a pizza, just a forty k pizza. Okay. Okay. So that's my coverage. I'm just going to use my stick randomly over its surface. Break it up, move it about. Yeah. There we go. So excess back into the pot, which is a, a beautiful thing about using the spatula. <laughs> close it so it has a drying time associated with it as all, all hobby products do um, I've, I usually just leave it for about an hour yeah so it's about 45 minutes so we're gonna leave it for an hour and then we'll come back to it um, for you with the magic of YouTube it'll be about three seconds okay so the earth textures dry now and uh, yeah it gives a just that basic texture. It's that's exactly does exactly what it says on the pot. Uh, so the next thing I do, I do a couple of layers of dry brushing. So the first thing I'm gonna do, grab the trusty Mechanica Standard Grey. So a bit of paper, large brush, give it a shake. And I'm literally gonna give this a, a fairly heavy dry brush to be fair guys. Um, Actually, I'm getting the majority off my brush and I'm going to go pretty much in one direction, just not the band. Okay, and it's it doesn't need to be super 
super duper accurate. This is how I do all of my bases, and it really is a simple basic technique, but it looks kind of cool when it's done, and that's what we're all about at the bunker. So, no matter if I get it a bit more intense in certain areas, I'm going all in one direction, and the reason I'm doing that is I will show you slightly because you do get lines. You see, there's a few sort of like contract lines, I suppose, for want of a better a better word. Okay, so we'll go in one direction. Yeah, and then we're going to turn it and go against it, so 90 degrees against the against the grain, so to speak. So against the grain. Yeah, and it just evens it out a bit. Just evens out that dry brush. Bear in mind, for this base, there's going to be a great massive monolith sitting on it, so it's not exactly going to be um, as visible as normal ones. Just go on the edges. Um, but this is the technique I use for all of my bases, from my Overlords base um, through to a, a standard Necron Warrior base. And this is the technique I use. Okay, so that's the, the grey done. Okay, you can see all the texture paints really sort of pick that out. And you could leave it like that if you did tarmac bases or you wanted to do like an Imperial City or anything like that. Okay, so next one we're going to do is I'm bringing out the trusty Corax White. Get that shake. <laughs> This paint, don't have to take some shaking. Now this is my base paint really, so I just got straight in with my brush. And it doesn't matter if it goes a tiny bit gray. All I'm looking for here is an undulation in the color. And I'm doing it quite severely. And there'll be a reason for that will become clear when we get to the next stage. Okay, so I'm really picking out the tops, the extreme points of this texture. really picks up nice and just adds that see so again you, you could quite happily just just use that if you wanted to that's a, <laughs> quite a, a decent enough looking base as it stands um, you know for imperials or whatever you wanted to and this is this the base that I would use if I was doing say like a night I might then want to do some like washes of brown in patches to make it look oily or orcs or whatever but I'm going for that sort of all my life has been sucked out of it by this monolith sort of look. Okay, so I'm going against the grain. There's my two stages of dry brush. Okay, I'm going to let that dry. And then I'll come back because we're going to now apply a wash to it, which will tie it all together. Okay, so uh, that's nice and dry. And what we're going to do now is tie all this together. And we're going to wash it with Agrax Earth Shade. Okay, now it's an excessive use of Agrax Air Shade. I'm just going to cover that point straight away, guys. Um, but you've got to think that this is how I'm doing all my bases. And obviously this boy is a big one. So, you know, it's just one of those things. Okay, and instantly, can you see how that's tying that together? We almost. <laughs> um, I get through this stuff. Pretty much like it's water, but I use, I use it almost exclusively for bases. Um, and I just find that it gives that sort of dead ground, dead world sort of look. You know, and you'd be amazed how far your washes will actually go. Now with this, I'm quite happily just applying it over the full thing. And it just ties all those colour undulations underneath together. And it just really sort of like instantly makes it look like it's corrected sort of ground if that makes sense it makes it look real that's that's what I'm all about so we're almost there handy to have a little hole in the middle isn't it? <laughs> and we're gonna go up the top as well okay so you've got to think obviously this is 160 mil base so you know there's there's areas other models and so on and so forth which are gonna be far less of a base size to use so that is at the stage now where we need to leave that to dry 
um, one that's when that's dry it'll give you this sort of realistic sort of undulation of ground um, and then I'm going to pop on tufts around it and that's it that, that is as simple as that as to how I make a base so um, let's come back to you when that's dry get some tufts on it and then we're done okay so now that our base is is dry and the wash is dry and we've got that sort of like realistic undulating sort of ground effect on there and the wash really sort of like brings out the sort of highlights nicely but in a natural way so that that's one that's the main sort of tip i have for my basin next thing i do i put some tufts on it and we're going to do that with some pva pva glue okay look at that put a dab on something that you're not using okay and enter old brush and this is really easy guys just dot it around now bear in mind this is for a monolith so it's not I'm gonna go around the edges a little bit okay if I had I don't know like this was a piece of wall or something like that I'd maybe tuft around it a little bit um, but I'm just thinking obviously the majority of this is going to be covered I'm going to do it for completion's sake, just to show you guys how I do a base. So, and plus, you know, go the extra mile and put those tufts under your monolith. <laughs> okay, so dot them around. That is probably more than enough, okay? So, dots of PVA, and then it literally, guys, is as easy as off the, uh, off the tuft rack, so to speak. Dot them about. Got some flatter ones there, which I'm going to dot in. Got some fresh ones, so mix up the sizes as well. So a little one, to a medium one, and just dot them around, sort of randomly. Okay, don't forget there's bigger ones as well. And it gives it that sort of dead ground effect, yeah. These are wasteland tufts from the army painter. Um, and I, again, I use the same tufts on all my bases. Okay, so that's that stage done. And then to tie it all together, we're going to give the entire lip of the base a corvus black rim. Give it a shake. And then um, come in with a, an empty, uh, empty? <laughs> a, a, an older brush. So. You can dilute this down if you want to, but again, it just acts to tie it all together. And I'm just going around the edge. Okay, and it just neatens it up. Obviously, this is an extreme size base. Um, majority of them that we use are 32 mil now, aren't they? Um, but the process is exactly the same. Okay, it really is. Um, I'm lucky enough to be at the stage where I'm adding things like monoliths and the Silent King and so on and so forth to my army. Um, I've done the 80 plus warriors. <laughs> so, we're getting there. But this just sort of like neatens it up, finishes it off. Always go around the edge of your base. Um, I like Corvus Black. Some people go around in brown. If it was, you know, think about a colour that complements the base, the actual top of your base colour. Uh, Mars bases, I'd go around in sort of like a brown. You know, like snow bases, I'd go around in light grey, things like that. And just really think about how it looks as a finished product. And there we go. So, we're going to let the PVA dry, and then we've got one fully finished base. And there we have it. So, glue's obviously still drying a bit, guys. But basic base translates into this on miniatures. So, that's one of my Doom Stalkers. And, uh Gives you an idea that you can you know put the tufts around to your advantage things like that so that's it that's how i do my bases it's as simple as that so have a go see what you come up with uh, share your tips if you do bases differently let me know and uh, as always guys please like comment and subscribe and happy hobbying <laughs>